All right, some skill building on guitar today. We're gonna to talk about using certain chord shapes to move up the neck and uh, really gives you some options. So if you've already got a bass player playing these, you know, in this range, you can just play, you know, like an F, but then you'd scoot it all the way up to an A. And if you happen to hit an open A, and then you hit this chord, right, that's a, an A major sounding chord. Then if you take your third finger and flattened it, then you get a D, then you'd scoot that up to an E, back down, and then back to the seven, six, five. And you can even add, you can add that low A if you want. Or if you've got a bass player doing that, then you can just hit these. And what I do with this one is I get the tip of my finger to hit the next string up so that I don't hear the A, and I'm just hearing and then I go like that, tip of the finger is touching the A string again. And you can also just be accurate back here, right? Only hit the ones you want to hit. So either with or without on the A string there. Then the other one that sounds better if you do let the, the A string ring, maybe it's just because we're all sort of used to it, is you know doing a little crazy train. So you've got that. Then what you do from there is you have to kind of flop your fingers. You're gonna put your middle right there on five. Four is gonna to go to the G4, or I'm sorry, pointer finger is gonna to go to G4. And then the ring finger is gonna to go to D6. So D6, G4, B5, and then you can let the E string ring, and then also let the A string on the bottom ring, and you get this, right? And then you take that same shape, now it's 4, D, 2, G, 3, B, right? And then you would just do a regular A. So here's that with a little bit of the rhythm. So there's a little bit of that. And in, then in terms of what you mentioned is the dominant nine, right? So what happens there is if you're doing like a regular, uh, let's say we just use a, a D7. And uh, in that case, we get that kind of bluesy sound. Now, if we want it to be a little more jazzy sounding, what we do is we take that voice and we go, we're thinking now five, starting from the A, five, four, five, five. And that'll give you this kind of sort of nebulous sounding, right? That's the dominant nine chord right there. Sounds really nice. Now there's other things you can do. If you take the pinky and you go up one more, then you get the Hendrix chord. That's known as a sharp nine, so sharp nine right there. And then if we go back to where we started, here's that the regular D7 again. You can take the pointer finger and move it up one. Now this one's a bit of a challenging chord as you, uh, I think you commented. Yikes! Right, that's got a, a lot of tension. But then, you know, from right there, it wants to lead you to a G. Right, so you could do the regular D7, and then just a regular G. Or you could throw in this, you know, flat nine. Or you could even do what you said, the dominant nine. Right, or the sharp nine. It just takes you a little bit further away from where you're trying to, to land and just create a lot more tension there. So, all right, I think that covers what we talked about. And uh, other than that, you know, just even doing your regular pentatonics. And those are really nice, like little triplets you can do where you go hit, hammer, pull. Right, just like Angus Young. All right, good luck.